Hello, I'm Dr. Gerald Chodak. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is a term many of us have probably heard before. But what does it actually mean? Simply put, ADHD is a common behavioral disorder that emerges in children before the age of seven. It can extend into adolescence and even adulthood. ADHD was first identified as a disorder in 1902, and for years doctors believed it was the result of serious brain damage. While that theory has since been proven wrong, the precise causes of ADHD are still unknown. What we do know is that the occurrence of ADHD is closely tied to biological factors such as the size and density of various brain structures and the way chemical reactions take place within the brain. For example, scientists have discovered that children with ADHD often have a smaller cortex, the part of the brain that controls thought and action. This diminished size usually occurs in the area of the cortex known as the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is an especially important part of the brain, playing a role in many key functions including impulse control, socialization, reason, and judgment. Experts believe this may help explain why some children with ADHD are more prone to drifting off, making sudden outbursts, or using poor judgment. Other research into ADHD has focused on nerve tissue in different areas of the brain. It appears that in children with ADHD, this nerve tissue is smaller, or sometimes thinner than in normal children of the same age. While scientists aren't yet certain as to why, they believe these variations can affect a child's attention and impulse control. In addition to the physical differences in brain structure, many experts believe that people with ADHD, like those with depression, have chemical differences as well. Some studies have shown that children with ADHD have lower amounts of the neurotransmitter dopamine in the brain. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that carry information to and from nerve cells. Since dopamine plays a key role in the proper functioning of the cortex, not having enough of it could interfere with cognitive processes such as focusing and attention the very same processes that people with ADHD struggle with. And though it's still being tested, the so-called dopamine theory seems to be supported by the fact that stimulants, which are often used to treat ADHD symptoms, work by increasing dopamine levels. Scientists still don't know the exact causes of ADHD, but much progress has been made. The more they discover about the roots of the disorder, the better equipped they'll be to develop more effective methods for understanding, diagnosing, and treating this common ailment.